Hey folks, Quill18 here, it is time for that most amazing of weekends. It is Ludum Dare Weekend, or Ludum Dare if you prefer. Ludum Dare is a 48 hour game programming competition. At 9 p.m. Eastern Time, a theme is announced, and from that point forward, you have 48 hours to make a game from scratch. You can see here, it starts in about three hours. You can go to lgjam.com to visit this website. There's also the old website at ludumdare.com, and eventually that domain name will also point over here. Uh, they're still partway through the, uh, the changeover, but ldjam.com does have the countdown timer there and will also include the theme announcement. I always live stream the entire thing. I've done this 15 times so far. This is going to be number 16. I live stream the whole thing from start to finish. So 9 p.m. Eastern Time, Friday evening, the theme gets announced. And from that point forward, it is 48 hours of programming. I do stop to sleep and, you know, maybe you know, run out and grab a bite to eat or something like that because it's important to keep your energy levels up because this is not a sprint. It is a marathon. Technically, Ludum Dare is actually two competitions that run side by side. There's the um, Ludum Dare Compo, which is what I do. It's a 48 hour solo um, event where you can't use any pre-existing assets. You can't use any art or music or anything like that. Um, even if it's you know open source or, or Creative Commons or whatever, uh, you can't use any pre-existing art assets. Code, yes, is a different thing as long as it's public. Like, you know, I'm going to use Unity Game Engine. That's fine. I don't literally have to write it in machine code, for example. Um... But other than that, you have to make everything live on screen. Or you don't have to do it on screen, but I stream the whole thing. So I will be making the whole thing live on stream. We always have a lot of fun. People hang out the entire weekend. Uh, we, again, I, I work on it solo, but I tend to like interact with the chats for important things like, hey, what do we call this game, for example? Um, so as always, go to twitch.tv slash quill18. Uh, and if you're there, you can always do an exclamation mark next stream in the chat to find the countdown timer. Usually I start about an hour before the actual competition starts. Um, so that way we can, you know, get ready, we can talk about different themes, ideas, that sort of thing. If you do go to lbjam.com, you can uh, click the theme voting at the top over here and see in the final round here. There we go, final round. These are the possible themes. People are voting on, technically if you make an account and log in and stuff, you can also vote in here and, you know, vote themes up, vote themes down. Let us know what you think might be the strongest one. Um, about, uh, this, this competition usually gets about a couple thousand entries. A couple of thousand people make games that they submit to Let Em Dare, which is crazy sauce. So one of these themes is going to be the one that's announced at 9 p.m. today on Friday, um, and then we will start working from there. Uh, there is going to be some judging this time. There wasn't the last time. There wasn't judging. It was the first time um, in well, 30 at the time, 36 Ludum Dares, where there hadn't been any judging. There will be judging this time. It's going to start a little bit after the competition. Usually, we have about three weeks to do all the voting on things. Um, there is no prize whatsoever for winning. It's just bragging rights and you know, just doing it for the love of programming. Uh, so do make sure to come out. Twitch.tv/quill18. Always have a blast. If you haven't got, seen it, I'll include some links down below so you can play some of my previous games. The um, all Almost all of them have been made in Unity, uh, with two exceptions. One was Fish Tank Commander over here, which unfortunately you can't play anymore because it was a web-based thing done in uh, Ruby on Rails. It was a turn-based strategy that you could play multiplayer with other people. Um, and just the web host for that no longer exists. Everything else should be playable. Uh, hopefully all the download links work. Certainly all the more recent ones will be. Um, and yeah, so other than Fish Tank Commander and the latest one, Wake Up Call, they've all been made in Unity. Wake Up Call was actually done in pure C Sharp and is actually a... Um, a console-based roguelike game that uh, I'm very proud of this one. I'm actually incredibly proud with this one. The theme was ancient technology, and it seemed perfectly fitting to make a text-based console game for that. Um, you're, the story of that is you're some super obsolete warbot. Like, you know, this is this is in the future, so there's like this whole sort of like subversion of the theme, but not really subversion of the theme on multiple levels with the whole roguelike thing. Um, I thought it was very good. I was very happy with it. Very proud. Um, and I think that the fact that there was no judging that competition meant that I could sort of, I don't know, stretch out a little bit and try something a little bit different like making just a text-based game. Uh, really like my uh, two entries before that as well. Dr. Deckenstein is a card game where you have to go through a dungeon and you're building up your deck. Really, really, really was very proud of that. Um, as well as the, uh, the strategy tile laying game called... Um, uh, growth industries that came before that, but you can definitely see a couple of things that were semi-similar here, you know, in sort of card slash tile laying games. Before that, we had Hell Wars, which is actually a, um, a, um, basically, um, a tower defense kind of game. And I think when I finished this one, I was like, ah, oh, the game's okay, but I don't know, or whatever. Going, I just played this again recently. Holy crap, this is, this is 
possibly my single most solid game in terms of interesting gameplay, great UI. I remember that um, my time budget for this worked out perfectly and I was able to throw in like a ton of polish on the last day, which was a, I was really happy about. What am I going to do this time? I don't know. I am leaning a bit towards doing a proper 3D game again. The last time I did a 3D game was Ink. Uh, before that was 99 Luftwaffles. And I gotta be honest, like, they were both a little bit on the weaker side. And part of the problem with doing a 3D game is that um, the art requirements tend to be a lot higher, which is a bit unfortunate. I, I, the 3D modeling is fine, it's mostly the texturing, and really, the texturing makes the game really kind of pop a lot. Although some of the modeling, like, you gotta know your weaknesses. Like, I love the level design in this game. It actually looks great in person, uh, but the actual, like, characters and things like that, that animation is a bit weak, so. We'll see what we're going to do. I could potentially still do another 2D game where the um, it's actually quite easy and fun to design art for. Uh, you know, I still like my art for V for Vector. It was very sort of like, I was looking for a vector art sort of game, very old schooly kind of thing, sort of glowing CRT kind of look, which kind of worked out. Um, certainly, I was very happy with my, uh, my the look of the game for Dr. Deckenstein. Um, you know, I thought the cards were fine, you know, lacking of tons of art, but it was okay. So, I, I don't know. I think there's some potential in my, in my 2D-ness for some artwork over there. So, maybe we'll stick to that. It'll depend on what the theme is. Again, there are a lot of them. Um, a lo every time I, uh, I do this, people are always asking me, what my do I have a favorite theme and I almost always say no well no actually I've literally always said no because I never want to get too married to any one particular theme or anything like that there might be some I think are a little bit weaker or not but I try not to overcommit and instead I, I try to th I think of a few game ideas for every single theme so that when we go into it we're a little bit I'm a little bit ready for for something uh, but I have to say I think I've got um, I, I, I kind of hoping that only five minutes went I don't think it will because um, a few let them dares ago actually quite a few uh, Let Dare 27, so literally 10 Let Dares ago. The theme for this was 10 seconds. Um, so five minutes is considerably different from 10 seconds in terms of the game implication. Um, I hope that people don't think it's too similar to that. Uh, I hope they think that it might be interesting. Anyway, the reason I, I'm kind of digging this is because I want to, uh, with this, I would make a, a game. I would actually make a pinball game about disarming a bomb. I've got this whole visual in my head about like a big, you know, stack of dynamite in the middle with a big LCD or LED clock with a big red numbers counting down in the middle. And you have to like make shots that like, you know, trigger things to cut wires and do this and do this and if you lose a ball you don't have lives instead when you lose a ball you you lose like a minute of time or something like that um and i love pinball a lot it's one of just the things that i love a lot in life um and i've tried to do virtual pinball stuff before including for let them dare uh let them dare the third one i ever did was pinballogy over here and uh the physics for it were pretty weak and um the art was like this is me learning sort of 3d modeling 101 uh, was very much it, right? Because there was my first entry ever. This is me learning Unity, and every single object in this game was in Unity primitive. I just, like, grabbed some cubes and assembled things together to do whatever, and it turned out halfway okay, honestly. And this was basically my first time uh, working in Blender. Uh, but this game, I thought, was very fun. People didn't really, like... Some people, there's always a complaint like, oh, it just doesn't really work with the theme or whatever. Well, nice thing about pinball games is to me, you can make a pinball game that works with virtually any theme. In real life, they do. They've got pinball games for every movie. They've got pinball games for like a night at the casino. They've got pinball games for fishing or whatever. I mean, just like you can make a computer game for basically any theme. So pinball kind of works and it might be fun to revisit that. Anyway, I thought I, I had some kind of cool ideas if it does turn into be the, um, if the five minutes one does, I like, oh, I've got some of these visual ideas. And I think I could actually do the 3D art for a pinball game relatively well now. Um, not 100% sure, but I think I could do a half decent job of doing art for a 3D game uh, in a pinball set setting. Because I think it mostly comes down to, I think I could 3D art things that don't require much in the way of animation, right? Characters, no. But an object, Sure, maybe, you know, especially low polygon, so we'll see. Um, there were a few others in here that I had some decent ideas. Oh, I had a, um, a <laughs> running out of space. I don't know what the game would be, so I'm not necessarily hoping for this theme, but I had a fun sort of idea that if running out of space wins, then the, the goal, my game is going to involve, you're in a spaceship that's on a crash course towards a planet. Because you're running out of space. 
Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, and I thought that might be kind of funny. I don't know what the game would be, but I would like it. Like as as you get closer and closer to planet, you know, you get like the flame effects from the atmospheric reentry, and that really starts to put time pressure on you, and that might be kind of entertaining. Uh, so we'll see. So there's there's a lot of little options. Um, some themes are are similar to others. I mean, Small World we did have Tiny World a while ago. Again, five minutes we had ten seconds, but that's pretty different, I guess. Chain Reaction was the theme for Ludum Derek Ten, but that was ages ago at this point. So um, simplicity we did have minimalism at one point so there might be some crossover there but you know it's an entirely new crowd and one thing about game designers is if you gave them if uh, let him dare literally was exactly the same theme every time every time you would get different games and uh, it's quite impressive so um, so we'll just have to see what comes up and hope that uh, we got some good ideas for it and I don't know. It'll be fun to do. So make sure to go over to twitch.tv slash quillateen. Be there before 9 p.m. Eastern time because, again, it's the tend to start maybe at, maybe 30 to 60 minutes earlier than that so we can talk about stuff. Um, you can always do exclamation mark next stream over in, uh, in the Twitch chat or if you go to ldjam.com, you'll get a countdown timer over there so you know what is what. And uh, if, you know, if you're in Europe, I realize that tonight's start will be late and that's too bad. But, hey, at least tomorrow morning is going to be perfect time for you to join in the stream. Well, my tomorrow morning will be the perfect time for you to uh, to arrive in the stream. And uh, don't worry, you can't you can't miss all of it. You might not be able to watch all of it because who's got that kind of stamina? But uh, you won't miss all of it. So I hope to see you there at some point this weekend. Ciao.